Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Today I want to talk once again about localization. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about localization again. I know I've done a few videos on localization in the past. It was a few years ago, but it's something that I'm always really interested in because it's, you know, when we, uh, when we took EarSpy, it was getting like, like a thousand downloads a day and we took it and we, we localized it into the top 10 languages that was coming in and it, and it tripled its downloads on Google Play like just over the over a course of a few days uh, and it was such a such a big boost to, to daily downloads and I spent the, the last weekend taking one of our other apps a Corona SDK app and, and trying to move that into localization and if you code it right it should be very easy which means you like if you're using native you use like uh, strings.xml on Android or the plist files on on Apple uh, Corona SDK doesn't really have anything like that, like not out of the box. You kind of have to, yeah, but there's different libraries and stuff, but you have to kind of code it yourself. So that's something that we've done on a few of our apps. Uh, and, it, and we do the same thing for Ionic. So it depends on what platform you are on. And so it, it, it really helps. If you hire a developer, you have to make sure they do that right. And if you also, if you do it yourself, you have to make sure you, you stay disciplined because it's really easy when you're like, when you're just like popping up an alert box saying there's been an error or something like that. It's just, you don't want to have to go all the way back to the strings of the XML or the whatever configuration file and put it in there, but you know, you know, but it's it's always good. So this is what I've been doing over the weekend is going through and just moving all that, checking, you know, how can we move some of the images. If you have a look at my screen here, this is kind of, kind of things that, that you have to look at. Um, so this is the, the little girl that pops up on the um, we asking for the ratings. So I, I, I did a video about this once before a long time ago. So we went we moved away from the alert box that says you know, do you like the app and all this stuff? So we came up with this little girl that says, you know, please, and it would just say, you know, we really help us out and all that stuff, and, and we get a lot more reviews that way. Something like a nice and playful way way to do it. it and we have like, you know, get lost um, and all this kind of stuff on there. So, however, when we localize this, and this is something that I think we're gonna spend over the next few days, or probably maybe the next few weeks doing, you know, we have to come up with another uh, we have to ch either change this to be programmatic, the actual please, or we have to swap out the images, you know, from the, uh, you know, on runtime, dep depending on the settings of the device. So, and again, in Android, it, that's easy. You <laughs> just, you put it in the res folder and, uh, you know, it will just take the one that it needs if that exists. But we have to kind of code this ourselves for Corona. So, and I know from experience that we have like a few apps where we have speech bubbles like this it's much easier to put it in the image, you know, and just swap it out, you know, at runtime. So, you know, have some code that says, you know, when the, when the app's running, if they go, if they get this screen, it'll check to see, you know, what language you're using. Do we have an image for that? If so, use that. Otherwise, go back to English. Uh, and then also, you know, the big thing we have is the, um, is our title images here. Let me see here. So like this is one Tagalog bubble bath. Uh, and it's just, you know, it looks really nice, but, you know, when we get this translated into Chinese and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's not just based on the font. So a lot of the times it's a balance between, you know, the designer making it really look good and then you know, you're trying to make it programmatic because you don't want it to be completely programmatic. It'll just look, you know, just text-based, you know, it would look awful. Uh, but, um, but again, so we you try to push back on that, try to use icons as much as we can and, and, and images and stuff like that. So. But, uh, but there's, so that's what I've been doing this last week is going through the, the bubble bath games, uh, which is our, our language games. And because it's like all these different configuration files coming in, you know, there's like stuff all over the place. And, I, and I, I have gotten lazy over the last you know, several months where I stopped using configuration files. I have to go through and do that. Now there's a really good feature on Google Scripts. Let me just show you this uh, that I use for, um, uh, for when I'm testing. Now you should never use Google Translate for production applications, but you can use it for stuff like testing and, um, you know, if you just want to check to, to make sure everything's right. So if I show you this here, here's a spreadsheet that I'm using, you know, and I've done the same thing for a lot of our other apps where I'll, I'll just take these strings out, put it into a spreadsheet. That's something that I could send off to a translator or to a translation service rather than have to explain how strings.xml works or give them a, a JSON file and just, you know, just do something like this. I could paste it in. I could, you know, transform it back to JSON on the way out. So this is you know going through and, and setting up the keys and just saying you know for the you know for the key level underscore one, we'll sh if it's English we'll show level one uh, and that's the default. But otherwise if it's say French we would use nouveau uh, one. So 
you know, one of the nice things about Google Script, now I have Excel, I have, you know, all the other things, I have Excel, I have numbers, I have all that stuff, but, you know, Google Script is great because it's so tightly integrated with Google Translate, and they have this function up here where you just say, like, Google Translate, you know, take that cell, Google Translate it from English into uh, French, or from English into whatever, so if I wanted to say, uh, so, like, when, when I'm testing, uh, I'll do this first, even though I will never go live with this. Uh, but like say, well, you do Chinese because then it's East, sorry, ZHCN here for uh, mainland Chinese. So then I can just go through here because I'm using that same function for the rest of them. I could just take this out and paste it right in and see what it is. So if it's French, I might not notice it. So, uh, and the reason I do this first using Google Translate is because every single time I get something translated, like you'll go through, you'll, you'll put this config file together and you'll send it off to the translators and then everything comes back and then you see something that's just like an alert box that pops up and it's just like some English in there or something like that and it's just it's so painful so so it's better to do this at least on a pro programmatic basis get everything ready and then you have this final list that you can send off to the translator so and, and you and you when I say it's it's not really you can't use this it's little things so a lot of things do make sense but like stuff like if I show you this here, um, which I noticed when I was going through it, you know, resume. So, you know, it pauses the game, you have a resume button, and of course it says resume, so it, it translated it to French into CV. So, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, if you don't speak the language and you're not going to pick up on that, you put it out there and it looks terrible. So, but this function really, really works well, uh, at least in terms of, of doing that. And because I'm using Google Scripts, usually what I'll do is I'll usually use Upwork. So I'll create like a job. When I did um, when I did algebra uh, study cards, we I, I just said five dollars a language, and I went on to Upwork, and I found you know because I don't really care if it's like a you know, a fifteen year old kid making pocket money or if it's you know a, a, you know a guy who's just you know got, has a few hours you know. I, I'm not looking for professional. This is one of the reasons I don't go with the professional services because if you go through like um, uh, it's a one hour translation, uh, there's, there's so many like really good ones and I'm sure it would save me so much time you know, and, and less headache, but they're usually a lot more expensive and I'm sure it's probably better quality, but I'm kind of like, I just want to get something out there and I want to pay as little as possible. So, so I'll do that. And the nice thing about Google Scripts is I could just copy this over several times, share it with them. They could just edit it right here in Google Script and then I could just go through here and uh, like for this is Lua, so just have my tab here where I just go to generate that, you know, copy the whole thing out, paste it into the code, reformat it, and then everything's good to go. So, and but this uh, keyword thing, I also use it for, for keywords. So, and one of these days, I know you guys have asking about keywords. One of these days we'll go through keywords and how I do the keyword research and stuff like that. And it might, it's not that advanced, but like, I'll, I'll use this for um, I have like this um, keyword worksheet for a lot of a lot of the apps. So I'll go through here and when I do my you know keywords, I'll, I'll bring everything together here. You can see I've got um, I'll put it in here. So I'll just translate it over. Uh, I'll put uh, you know uh, different keywords for U.S., U.K., U.S., Canada, U.K., and Australia. This is for iTunes. So I'll, I'll put that in there. I'll also you know come up with some different uh, phrases that I might want to put in the title. So it'd be like. So this one is for Vietnamese spy. So Vietnamese spy will learn Chinese. I didn't use learn Chinese, but uh, you know Vietnamese language, Viet learn Vietnamese, whatever. And I'll put them together. And then when I just go there and do that, and then this is where I will use um, Google Translate sometimes. So especially for the keyword field. So here, like I'll, I might take that and put it in the, um, I might put it in the title, but maybe not. It's kind of like you know, my what I'm thinking is. My logic here is that somebody who, say somebody in Sweden who speaks very good English, he may not go in and search on the search terms that I want in English. He might search on, you know, in Swedish, so I kind of want to have those those languages go in there. So, so I will have like this Google Translate function here. So here you can see it takes everything from here, you know, substitutes the uh, spaces, takes the spaces out, uh, translates it from English to Spanish, and this takes the first hundred characters, so we'll just truncate it, and it's like just, it's just a copy paste job, and I'll just put it in there. And again, it's just you know quick and dirty. Um, you know nobody sees the keywords field, so I'm not that worried about it. Uh, and I used to do do it with the description too, but I don't anymore. What I found was if I show you um, one of these apps here on iTunes, this is Hindi Spy. So you know here I've got, if I show you this, I put it into the different languages. So if I go. Uh, here's English US, English UK. So changing the uh, changing the keywords here. But if I go down to Indonesian, 
You can see I've got uh, Indonesian keywords, but I still have the English uh, English description. Now they used to they used to reject that. They used to uh, reject those reviews, but now it just seems to they seem to be fine with it. So at least I've had them rejected before because it was like using other languages. So if I go down here to say Vietnamese, you see I've got the Vietnamese text here. I got the Vietnamese in the title. Still got the English screenshots, but I still got the English in the description. But it's just a way to get more keywords in there. Now I've used Google Trans Translate with a uh, Google Play before and I didn't see any difference. So it was like, you know, it's probably because they, you know, I'm using their system with their stuff and they're probably using that anyway. So anyway, and, uh, if I give you an example, here's one that I did with uh, algebra study cards back in the day. We went and we had it translated into you know, every language that Google Play did. So it was just, I went, this is when I went in and I said, you know, we put everything together and I went in and put, you know, $5 per language and we didn't get all of them. I didn't use a, every one I didn't get, we didn't use, but let's say like I went to the French one and I just say share it with them. They, you know, they could edit that, those cells and they go through and then I could just basically have the little, you know, merge logic there that just takes it out, puts it in there, shows that there and, and that. So anyway, the, you know, if you use Google scripts, uh, use, you know, or Google sheets, then you can use that Google translate uh, function there, which is, I just think it's a, uh, it's it's really useful. It's a, it's a thing that I use, you know, just all the time. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. And if you haven't localized your apps, you know, definitely do that. Some apps you can't localize really well, especially if it, they have like user contributed data and stuff like that. But if you do have something that, that you can try out other languages with, you, you have nothing to lose. You might have to, you know, spend a little bit on a translator and I'd say a little bit, try to spend as little as possible. But, um, you know, you, you don't know, you, you, your app may do better in say Vietnam than it does in, the U.S., but that those ratings and reviews might bring it up in the U.S., and you might do better in uh, in other markets than it does in your main one if you can make that work. And, but again, you have to think, you have to be smart about it. You have to be make sure that your like your icon doesn't have um, you know text in it. Make sure that you're uh, you know try to have as little text and images as you can, and and have those those files swap out. So anyway, I like to know what you guys, what kind of experiences you guys have had with localization. And I like I know I've talked about localization loads before. But it really is. I mean, that was the one thing that that made the biggest difference on my apps when when I was starting out was like just you know everything was just trudging along. But when I localize it to different languages, uh, then everything just really took off. And that's what I spent all last week working on. So anyway, let me know how how you guys are are doing it and what kind of success you've had there. And uh, and that's it. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.